Hi, my name's Shane Gange. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Victoria University of Wellington. At the moment, I'm sitting in front of Victoria University's new Coastal Ecology Laboratory, which is where I have my office and much of the marine research uh, from Victoria University is conducted from. Today, I just want to talk to you briefly about a new publication I have coming out. This will be published in Methods in Ecology and Evolution. The publication is co-authored by Professor Shirley Pledger and Associate Professors Casey Burns and Geoffrey Shima, all from Victoria University of Wellington. The publication itself is titled A Unified Analysis of Niche Overlap Incorporating Data of Different Types. Now, the publication proposes novel indices for calculating niche overlap between species pairs. Now, although niche overlap has been extensively studied over the last few decades, this publication is novel in that it proposes new indices for calculating niche overlap from different types of data, for example, binary data, categorical data, continuous data, proportion data. Using appropriate transformations and density estimation techniques, each data type gives rise to equivalent measures of niche overlap ranging from zero, or no overlap, through to one, complete overlap. Now here we have examples of four different data types. In each of these examples, we have two species, a red species and a blue species, with the probability distributions for each species equaling one. Now, the overlap statistic between species pairs is simply the overlapping area between the distributions for each species. Okay, so measures of um, niche overlap derived from different types of data can be combined into a single measure of niche overlap by averaging across the different niche axes. Once the overlap statistic has been calculated for each niche axis, it is impossible to create a composite output of niche overlap by averaging over multiple axes. So in this example here, our composite measure of niche overlap in the red box has been calculated over six different niche axes, each described by a different type of data. Having calculated mean niche overlap across our different niche axes, we then describe null model permutation tests which can be used to assess statistical differences in niche overlap and address common questions of population and community ecologists. For example, population ecologists may want to know if two species occupy different niches or the same niches. So, in this first example we've got two populations, a blue population and a red population, and within niche space they have non-overlapping distributions, that is, they have a niche overlap of zero. Alternatively, these two populations may overlap in niche space, in which case population ecologists will want to know what that degree of overlap is. Alternatively, community ecologists may want to know if multiple species are evenly distributed across niche space or clumped within niche space. So, in this first example, we've got even distribution. Now, we, we can evaluate this distribution um, by considering two extreme cases of the variance in relationship to the mean. A minimum variance of zero occurs if the individual species are evenly distributed across niche space with equal mean niche overlap for each adjacent pair of species. This represents the maximum possible separation of species on this niche axis. Alternatively, maximum variance occurs when all niche overlaps are either 0 or 1, a proportion being at 1 and the remaining proportion being at 0. This case represents species clustering. Between these two extremes, there will be a variance associated with random distribution of a species on this niche axis, with neither even spacing nor clustering occurring. Therefore, the proportion of maximum variance can be used as a measure of even spacing versus clustering. We view this publication as having wide appeal for a variety of reasons. First, a technique such as this has been missing from the literature. In the past, if researchers have wanted to combine, say, continuous and categorical data into a single analysis of niche overlap, they have had to convert the continuous data into ordered categories. However, this results in a loss of information. Now, our techniques overcome these types of problems by creating equivalent measures for each data type, which can then be averaged across different niche axes. Our indices also, because our indices can incorporate different data types, they should result in more comprehensive descriptions of uh, ecological niches. Our, our indices will also allow for the reanalysis of extinct data types. And these indices are also relevant to a wide 
wide range of taxa and ecological disciplines, including uh, species diversification, invasive species, um, global climate change, and competitive interactions. Now the usability of our indices is enhanced by our code which is included in the supplementary material. Included in the R script are three examples, A, B and C here. Within each example there is a readme file and the readme file um, outlines what the R code does, how to run the R code and the structure of any associated data files. Also within each example is a file containing the niche functions, which are what the R code is going to call to do its calculations, associated data files, and the R code itself. Okay, so if we open up the first example here, uh, I just want to point out that I've tried to annotate the R file to give an explanation of what's going on. So these are, these are some of the annotations here. All the annotations are preceded by a hash mark. Now within the R code, there's also areas where the user needs to um, input data or defined variables um, and all these areas are preceded by question marks. So the first example here um, is an artificial data set examining mean niche overlap between three species on six niche axes. In this example each niche axis um, is measured using the same individuals so here we have individual one and we have values for each of the six axes for that individual. Now what this means is that the individual data for each niche axis can be read in from a single file and a single analysis can be used to calculate mean niche overlap across all these axes. The other two examples differ in that each axis is measured using different individuals. This means that before niche overlap can be averaged across all the axes, individual data needs to be read in for each axis and niche overlap on that axis calculated. So the second example um, uses an observational data set to examine mean niche overlap between five species of reef fishes based on three functional traits and those are position within the lagoon, pectoral fin aspect ratio and habitat association. Now the third data set examines mean niche overlap between five species of alpine plants based on two functional traits and those traits are elevation and surface leaf area. Um, both of these examples are used to illustrate the use of our indices in the finished published article. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this and I hope you find these new indices useful in your own research. Cheers.